Hi, it's Dwyer, October 20th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk Teofimo Lopez versus Vasily Lomachenko, post-fight. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, before I get into the fight, in an effort to persuade boxing, to manipulate boxing, let me congratulate ESPN. I thought it was tremendous, simply tremendous, that a fight of this caliber, and it was high caliber, right? Teofimo Lopez, unbeaten. Lomachenko viewed by many as the best in the sport pound for pound. To have a fight of this caliber outside of pay-per-view, was simply tremendous. I tip my hat to Bob Arum. I tip my hat to the broadcasting team, Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley. Let me also say too, I know Andre Ward had this fight a draw. Understand, Jose Pedraza, who fought Lomachenko in the past, thought that Loma had won the fight. Lomachenko himself not only thought he won the fight, he was so upset with the scorecards that he stormed out of the ring, did not stick around for interviews in the ring. Just to understand that elite fighters, Ward, Pedraza, Loma himself, saw a fight that was different than many other people saw. I thought the fight was interesting. Now let me just say, I lost on this fight, lost totally. My expectations going into the fight were reflected in the bet I was suggesting here online. I thought Lomachenko was going to win the fight. If I had one bet to make, it would have been Loma to win. I told subscribers here that the hedge would be Lopez by KO. I simply saw no way that Lopez was going to win by decision. Let's go one step further. I made the argument, and many of you disagreed with me, the pre-fight video is still up, all the videos are still up, the comments to that pre-fight video are still up. I made the point that if Lomachenko walked down Teofimo Lopez, if he got in the pocket and kept going, if he forced Lopez onto his back foot, it was my belief that Lopez was going to fall apart. That Lopez is great on his front foot. That Lopez is a counterpuncher who needs space to operate. That Lopez is bad, well not bad, but not as good on his front um, on his back foot as he is on his front foot. And that Loma was a master deep in the pocket. Now, I thought Lopez won the fight. My scorecard was 7-5. Right? I'll just say this. If you're going to drive your car across town, you need to get it out of the driveway. I believe that Lomachenko had the wrong strategy here. Gave the fight away. I was watching the early parts of the fight. Loma was asleep at the wheel. The car was still in the driveway. He was spending his time backing up, right? He should have known, just looking at the scorecards in the Yui Fury-Joseph Parker fight, that if you're not throwing punches, the Oscar De La Hoya Pernell Whitaker fight for an older generation, if you're not throwing punches, if you're relying on the judges seeing your great defense, then you're risking it all, right? A judge is going to see an active fighter against an inactive fighter. Maybe the inactive fighter has a lot of great footwork, is making you miss, right? The problem is the judges aren't seeing you land punches. Loma is not only backing up too much in the first six rounds, Right? Loma's hardly throwing punches. 
He's not backing up and punishing Teofimo for collapsing the pocket. He's just backing up and circling. Right? Of the first six rounds, I believe I gave Loma one round. Right? I can tell you, as I was watching the fight, right? They reached a point in maybe the ninth round where I thought, you know, Loma's going to have to get knockdowns to win this fight. Right? Lopez, if he just stays upright, if the rounds are slow rounds, in other words, you look at the round, you might think that Loma won the round, but it's 60-40, not 80-20 like the early rounds were, where Teofimo is doing all the work. Then I thought that Lopez was going to win. Right now, what I want viewers to understand is I still feel, still feel, that Lopez on his back foot has holes. That Lopez on his back foot, if you collapse the pocket on him, if you don't give him the 18 to 24 inches that he needs to operate, Right? You can drown him. The problem here is that the ninth round, right? And understand the way this fight goes is Loma doesn't really get cooking until the eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh rounds. Right? The ninth round should have been the third round. In other words, the way I saw the fight, given that Lopez doesn't have a lot of experience going the distance. Given that Lomachenko is a great athlete who, in training, will submerge himself underwater for minutes. Right? This is a guy with extraordinary lung capacity. This is a guy with a history of fighting highly competitive fights. The Jorge Linares fight, where he gets knocked down. He wasn't knocked down here. He gets knocked down. The Jose Pedraza fight. The Nate Campbell fight. This is a guy who has a history of fighting highly competitive fights where the other elite opponent wilts late. Right? Wilts in the 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th rounds. Let me also say, for those of you who don't think that Loma is great inside and doesn't have a great body attack, look at the Anthony Crawla fight. Now here he's fighting Teofimo Lopez, right? Lopez is upright. Lopez comes forward, he's decent volume, he's not high volume. Right? He's a counter puncher. He's not a combination puncher. His combinations are really three punches at most. Now, he is fast with the shots, but the point is, if you deny the angle early, he doesn't get the shots off. So, I was wrong on this fight. I'm not here to pretend otherwise. But I believe had Loma turned up the volume early, right? I want people to revisit the 11th round. I thought Teofimo was struggling in that round. Had Loma, with great stamina, with a reputation of being tough in the later rounds, knowing the later rounds, right? I know Lopez went the distance against Nakatani. Okay, fine, but Lopez doesn't have the experience in the later rounds. Not the same experience against opponents like Linares and Pedraza, both guys former champions that Teofimo Lopez had. Had Loma come out and started to back up Teofimo Lopez after the first six minutes. Okay, Loma does a Bernard Hopkins thing early, right? He likes to see the lay of the land, see which way you move when he does certain things. Okay, fine. After a feeling out round or two feeling out rounds, 
Loma should have made this a war of attrition. Now, I agree. Lopez is accurate. That's one of the secrets to the fight. Right? When this fight starts, Loma's hardly throwing punches. Lopez doesn't throw a lot of useless punches. This isn't Ali Foreman, right? Where Foreman tires himself out. No, no, you understood that Lopez and Timothy Bradley did a great job on the telecast of pointing this out. You understood that Lopez was operating at a pace that he liked. In other words, while Loma is giving away the rounds on his back foot, hardly throwing any punches, Lopez was calmly taking the rounds without throwing a lot of punches, and the punches he threw were accurate. Right? I understood. There's a risk that if Loma just dove into the pocket, he might get caught with something coming in the pocket. Might get knocked down. Might get knocked out. Maybe Loma was surprised by Lopez's power. Maybe that's what kept him in the driveway for the first half of this fight. Right? But understand, when Loma dives in the pocket, it's clear that he can slip Lopez's jab and get in the pocket. It's not like Loma is roughed up after the fight. It's not like he has an eye closed. It's not like he's been running into a jab the whole fight. He knew how to slip Lopez's jab. He knew how to get inside on Lopez. As comical as that seemed to many of you, he has Lopez with his back up against the ropes. Again, look at rounds 9, 10, and 11. Right? Round 11 especially. Let me say this too. I believe Loma makes a mistake on the angles. I thought Loma, who was smaller, was going to come in lower. Right? Lopez is looking for a clean pocket and he's looking for clean opportunities. I thought Loma was going to come in low. You know the list of low fighters I always talk about. Joe Fraser, Mike Tyson, Jack Dempsey. I thought Loma was going to come in low and I thought Loma was going to muddy the pocket. Right? Loma is a little bit too high. He should have come in and taken away Lopez's sharp shooting ability by coming in lower than what Lopez is comfortable with. Right? Lopez is able to throw headshots and hit Loma. Right? I thought what Loma should have done is come in too low where Lopez would have to find his head. Right? Loma doesn't bob and weave enough. He's not low enough. He showed you that he could get inside. But he's not low enough. Let me go one step further. Lopez, as his back up against the ropes, right? as he has his back up against the ropes, and this is not Salvador Sanchez, this is not Ali, this is not Floyd Mayweather, He's not a guy who, leaning on the ropes, has an offensive game, can stay there, and can actually fight with his back up against the ropes. Think Sanchez, Wilfredo Gomez, early in that fight. Right? Sanchez ends up dropping Gomez early in that fight. Right? Think Ali Foreman. Right? You have murderous puncher George Foreman in front of Ali, and Ali's on the ropes. He's not, he's not even really trying to get to the middle of the ropes. He's on the ropes, rope-a-doping. He has the strategy to catch Foreman as he's coming in. That fight's more competitive than the folklore wants us to believe. Think Floyd Mayweather against Marcus Maidana. Right? At 23, that's not Teofimo Lopez. So Lopez is on the ropes. Put there by Lomachenko. Again, rounds 9, 10, and 11. Right? He's on the ropes. He's put there, maneuvered there by Lomachenko, who's finally 
crashing the pocket. Loma allows Teofimo Lopez to pivot away from that position. He allows Lopez, who can't fight back with his back up against the ropes, right? Who isn't a great clincher. I'm not saying Lopez isn't extremely talented. He earned a swim. But it's not like Lopez is clinching and turning Lomachenko. No, he allows Lomachenko to rough him up when he's when his back's up on the ropes. His move is to slide out. Now here's where Loma needed to be more physical. And all of this shouldn't have happened in the 9th, 10th, and 11th rounds. Should have happened starting in the 3rd round. Right? Loma should have used forearms. Loma should have used whatever it took. Wrestling moves. To keep Lopez with his back up on the ropes. Let's remember Floyd Mayweather's toughest fight from a scoring point of view, right? Uh, with the public. That's the Castillo fight. How does Castillo rough up Floyd Mayweather? He has Floyd up on the ropes. He's low. He's throwing punches to Floyd's body. He's not allowing Floyd to pivot to the middle of the ring to move away from him. Let's remember HBO score Harold Letterman had Floyd losing that fight. That first Castillo fight so controversial they had to fight again. Right now Mayweather, mid-career, picks up a new set of skills. So by the time he fights Ricky Hatton, and Ricky Hatton is doing roughhouse moves inside, Mayweather's ready. But he wasn't the first Castillo fight. Lopez, in his early 20s, wasn't ready for that here. The reason Lomachenko thinks he won the fight is because in the later rounds, Loma starts to do what he wants, starts to get inside on demand, starts to rough up Teofimo Lopez. Now, Lopez catches him with uppercuts at times. That's a mistake by Loma. He should have come in with a low arm bar, right? My point to you, though, is counterpunching Teofimo, right? Wants a clean pocket. He wants you outside. He wants clear opportunities to read your movement. This fight should have been fought the way Timothy Bradley fought Devin Alexander. Right? The way Andre Ward fought Edison Miranda. Right? If Loma has the inside skills, and he does, and he's fighting a guy who stands a little bit more upright, who doesn't have a lot of experience against elite opposition late in a fight, then why didn't Loma push it early? I know Loma was out of the ring for 14 months. Okay, fair enough. Maybe there was some rust. Maybe the timing was a little bit off. Right, but how did he expect to win the fight? Throwing hardly any punches. On his back foot. For most of the first six rounds. It was as if Loma thought. Teofimo Lopez was just going to fall down in the last third of the fight. Well, why would he? You didn't tire him out. Right? Loma should have been inside low, working Lopez's body, muscling him, keeping him on the ropes, not allowing him to spin away to the middle of the ring. Right? Should have been holding him, quite frankly, if he needed to. 
there's a great moment in this fight. Put it this way. Lopez is so unaccustomed to that mode of fighting. And there's a great moment in this fight where Lopez starts complaining, if you could believe this, that Loma was hitting him while holding him inside. So Andre Ward, a master at fighting inside, live on the telecast, says, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have a hand free, you can continue hitting him. Right? Other times, Lopez gets a little flustered. Unfortunately for Loma, this happens in the later part of the fight. Right? Lopez gets a little frustrated. He felt that Loma was holding and hitting his head. Right? He motions to the referee. He's so unaccustomed to rough and tumble that he's complaining to the referee in a fight that he's winning handily at that stage. Right? Understand, Loma should have muddied the pocket early. He should have been hitting and holding early. Right? Think about another fight. Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard. Right, you remember Duran gets Ray Leonard over by the side of the ropes. Duran turns the fight into a scuffle. Right, he's deep on Ray Leonard. Why? He doesn't want Ray Leonard to extend his arms, to flash combinations, to show ring generalship, to be Ray Leonard. That's the fight Lomachenko doesn't start fighting until the later rounds. Now I know many people disagree with me on this and I know the math disagrees with me on this but as I've said before a round isn't a round. Right? If you lose the early rounds I believe judges who should be scoring every round independently what you do in round two is independent of what you did in round one. The judges are supposed to turn in their cards after every round. There isn't supposed to be a carryover, but there is. So you can imagine, Loma comes in, he's the favorite. The takeover, Lopez is the underdog. You're a judge, right? First round is a Lopez round. The second round arguably is a Loma round. Then you get to rounds three, four. Those are both Lopez rounds. By the start of the fifth round, weren't you at home watching this fight on ESPN Plus? I'll give the plug here. Weren't you thinking, wow, this could be an upset unless this dynamic changes? Weren't you thinking that by the start of the fifth round? Folks, the fifth round goes to Lopez. The sixth round, I thought, goes to Lopez. Understand, if you're going to start slow, if you're going to, by design, give up some of the early rounds, by the end of the first half of the fight, you really need for it to be 4-2 against you or better. In other words, you can't allow yourself to be more than two rounds down at the halfway point of the fight. You understand that? Because if you're down 4-2, then the other guy only needs to win a third of the remaining rounds. Right? If you're down 5-1, you're not two rounds down like you would be at 4-2. You're four rounds down. Your deficit gets exponential. So it's shocking. In the fifth and sixth rounds, when both fighters should have known that Lopez was ahead of Loma, at least 3-1, and even the second round isn't convincingly Loma. Right? Understand, both fighters going into the fifth round should have known that at a minimum, Lopez is up two rounds. 
And yet, in the fifth and sixth rounds, there is no urgency from Lomachenko. None. So as you can imagine, a judge, by the start of the seventh round, may have felt that he was seeing a one-sided fight. Right? If you gave Loma the second round, understand, by the start of the seventh round, that means the judges would have given Lopez, if he won all the other rounds, four rounds in a row. You don't want judges to get in the habit of voting against you. So, second half of the fight, Loma decides to step on the gas. Right? You understood that he needed knockdowns to get back into the fight. If he dominates the second half of the fight and wins five of the six rounds, the fight would be a draw. If he was down five rounds to one at the end of the six. So we don't get the urgency from Loma until later in the fight. Right? Loma takes over. Ninth, tenth, eleventh rounds. He has Teofimo up on the ropes. The eleventh round is probably his best round. He has Teofimo up on the ropes. He's cuffing him. Teofimo looks uncertain of himself. Now in the third round, Teofimo might have gotten discouraged. Right? He's the underdog. This is his big moment. The favorites here cuffing him around. Forcing him onto a plan B. Right? Plan A is him pot-shotting you coming forward. Right? Loading up, trying to land a left hook. Trying to land a straight right hand. Right? That's his plan A. You know that. If he's backing up and his back's up against the ropes, that's plan B or plan C or plan D. Had a young fighter in the third round found himself on a plan B or plan C. Might have been demoralizing. But when you're about to pick up several titles, when you have the fight won, in the 11th round, if you can just make it to the end of the 12th, right? When you're that close to unification, right? Teofimo was going to go for it. He's not demoralized in the 11th round. He knows he's winning the fight by several rounds. So the timing is off here for Lomachenko. He's still Lomachenko. I didn't feel he was washed up. I know on the telecast they have pointed out that um, as Loma has gained weight, opponents are landing punches at a higher percentage. I would argue that Loma at this stage of his career is only fighting elite fighters. Right? Yes, the numbers are going to be dampened a bit. Why? Because he's fighting people like Linares and Pedraza. Right? That's what a talented opponent's going to do to you. I think Loma's still Loma. But if he's honest with himself, as he looks at the tape, if he feels like I do, that Lopez is a different person on his back foot, that Lopez at this age, and let me throw out another name that I feel we'll find this out about, Daniel Dubois, that Lopez at this age, when you watch his fights, there are two set of Lopez's. Right? There's Lopez on his front foot. You saw that the first six rounds of this fight. Right? Accuracy, timing. On the telecast, they called him twitchy, hand speed, confidence. Right? He's charismatic. He looks confident. Right? The judges have to be impressed by his ring presence. He doesn't look meek and meager. He doesn't look ambivalent in the ring. But then there's the Lopez who, inside, is complaining about the smaller man, Lomachenko, hitting him with his free hand. Then there's the Lopez who gets backed up and starts getting hit flush in the face with some Lomachenko shots. Right? There's the Lopez who has to rely on some 
you know, trick moves to get himself off the ropes. He can't clinch you, wait for the referee to separate you, and then move away to the middle of the ropes. He can't walk you into a jab as he's on his back foot backing up. You notice he's up against the ropes, not by design, but because he can't handle Loma crashing the pocket later. Now, the reason it's important is we're trying to handicap not just this fight, but other fights. Right? Lopez against Gervonta Davis, a guy who likes to come on his front foot who has ring presence, who has an extensive amateur pedigree, who himself has been in big fights, who has crossed the Atlantic, and who has already fought in Europe in a fight where he, other than his corner and his promotional team, had nobody in the stands and won that fight. You wonder what happens in that fight if Lopez is forced onto his back foot, right? I don't see Davis giving away the first half of the fight, right? Davis, of course, is a southpaw. You wonder what happens in that fight. Should it happen, right? I noticed that while Lopez, after this fight, said, look, I can make 135, but Maybe now is the time for me to think about 140. Right? You wonder what happens if he fights Josh Taylor. Right? Folks, the water is deep. Understand. Gervonta Davis unbeaten. Josh Taylor unbeaten. Just destroyed a guy in the first round by getting the guy backing up and by hitting him with wicked body shots. Right? You wonder what happens if a skilled opponent decides to collapse the pocket on Teofimo Lopez early and is aware, unlike Kami, of Lopez's left hook and the fact that Lopez is a counter puncher who's not high volume, who doesn't feel comfortable throwing long combinations. Let me say this too. I was looking at the later rounds and the lost opportunities all over the page here. Lopez starts dropping his hands, not by design, right? I know he looks macho and I know he's, you know, throwing swag all over the place. But I believe inside he's a little tired. Right, so you notice in the early rounds his hands are up. In the later rounds, which he's losing, right? Let's... Let's be clear here. If this fight's just the last half of the fight, Lopez loses that fight. When you throw in the first half of the fight, he wins by at least a couple of rounds. Right, so understand, in the part of the fight where Lopez is losing, Lopez starts dropping his hands. Right, a Gravante Davis, a Josh Taylor, they're going to try to make that happen earlier, not later. Right? If Loma was hoping that Lopez's stamina would fail him, he needed to force Lopez to work more in the first half of the fight, in the rumble in the jungle. You'll notice that there are times in that fight where Foreman stops throwing punches. So what does Ali do, knowing that Foreman's younger than him, knowing that the last thing he wants is this younger lion to have his stamina? So Ali starts motioning to Foreman, right? He wants the fight to continue. This is while he's over by the ropes. He's motioning to Foreman because he wants Foreman throwing punches. Here, Teofimo Lopez is allowed to cruise through the first six rounds without tiring himself out. Lomachenko isn't even crashing the pocket to force him to defend himself. That was a mistake. It cost Lomachenko the fight. 
He didn't have the timing right. He gave away too many of the early rounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also make this argument. If these two fight again, right, because it's prize fighting, because this fight I'm sure is all over the press, <laughs> right, because they might make these fighters a financial offer that they might not be able to turn down, right, it might be too rich. Um, I'm guessing the next fight's not going to be outside, outside of pay-per-view. If they fight again, I'm going to make the same recommendation, even though I lost. Don't get me wrong, I did not win the hatch. I thought Loma would win the fight. I'm going to make the same recommendation. Because I believe if Loma pushes it early, you're going to have a much more intense fight. You're going to have pacing concerns from the Lopez side of the aisle. You're going to have a different set of expectations now, too. Right here, the line was clearly in Loma's favor. Now you're going to have a lot of people believing this takeover talk. Lopez is probably going to be the favorite. Right? In an accelerated fight, you would also have an increase odds, increased chance of a KO. So in a rematch, I would take Loma again. Right? He's probably going to be the value side of the play. Anytime you can get Loma as an underdog, where he has familiarity with the opponent and was not knocked out in the prior fight. Right? Actually looked better as the fight went deeper. Right? Looked great in the 9th, 10th, and 11th rounds. Was winning the fight over those three rounds. Right? Won that three-round stretch, I thought. Right? In a rematch where Loma gets the car out of the driveway and onto the highway by the third round, where he's not down by four rounds. Hell, five rounds after the first six. Right? There would be an urgency. So Lopez, of course, would be in a position where he would be going for the KO. While Loma, of course, would be going for crashing the pocket because it worked well in rounds 9, 10, and 11. Well, anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Again, I lost on this fight. I know many of you won big, right? I remember the pre-fight video. I saw the comments. People were saying, hey, this is Lopez. You're underestimating Lopez's boxing ability, many of you said. Tell us about it here in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.